Today I'm going to take you to a bunch of Japanese chain restaurants from breakfast to lunch to snacks to dinner and right now we're starting with breakfast, a very traditional one at that. I've got some rice, I have some miso, I have a raw egg and some beautiful beans inside here. So let's get started with this amazing set from Matsunoya for 200 yen. Crazy cheap. It's currently about 8 a.m because this place opens at 4 a.m. So if you want a really early breakfast, this is the place for you. I'm gonna make my beans. I'm sorry if you're not a fan, or you've, if you have heard of these, you probably won't like them, but I am a big, big fan of nothing. I'm gonna start by adding the dashi joyu inside our beans. Next is some mustard. My favorite step is mixing. And I've got some beans full of vitamin K. This is gonna be my first bite of the day. It really wakes me up. To be honest, Japanese breakfast isn't my go-to. I do prefer just a piece of toast with some Vegemite, being Australian. It's really common here to have raw egg. There's a dish called TKG, so tamago kake gohan. So I've got my raw egg and let me just add it in. Now we mix. Mmm. Simple but satisfying. I heard you can put the natto inside the tamago bowl, so in they go. Oh, look at that stringy goodness. Wow. So this is the extra challenge if you're feeling really adventurous. Raw egg and stringy beans. By the way, these are fermented beans. I don't think I explained it. Natto, fermented soybeans. I've never done this before. Mm, I'm not really a fan of that. There's too many textures going on here. I don't know, there's something about that. <laughs> Alright, on to the next location. This is Marugame Udon and I live and die by this chain because it has saved me so many times. It's super cheap and affordable, delicious udon. But the great thing about Marugame is they have a wide variety of options on the menu. They have hot and cold udon. And you can also get a bunch of sides. So I've gone for a tempura satsumaimo, so sweet potato, to go with my shoyu oroshi udon. I already forgot the name of it, but it's a summer special here, which features a cold udon with some ginger, as well as some daikon, which is radish, as well as a sudachi, which is a lime here. For this particular dish that I've got, I have a dashi shoyu here on the table that I need to add to the dish. Time to dig in. Mm. A hot day, you can't go wrong with udon. It always, always tastes so freaking good and it cools me down. The sweetness of that soy sauce is really nice as well and it complements the lime from the sudachi. That's great. And one of my recommendations when coming here is they have a self-serve section where you can add like your own little tempura batter crisp as well as green onion, which I always put a pretty generous serving because I'm a big fan of both of those. And this whole dish only cost me about 600 yen. Pretty affordable if you ask me for a side as well as a regular sized udon. Time to give my sweet potato a go. Unfortunately, this one wasn't super fresh. I guess it's been sitting there for a while. You can come here and they'll just make it fresh and it'll just be piping hot or it'll be like an older one. Maybe it's because I'm here right before the lunch rush, but still good, but I would have preferred it to be nice and hot. Let me add some more sauce. I like that I can like choose the amount of sauce to add because you don't have like a really strong flavor then. When I come here though, I do get a little overwhelmed by the menu because it all looks very similar. Um, there's a thing called bukake udon and zaru udon, which are both, <laughs> I don't know exactly what the difference is. I've asked the staff so many times, I keep forgetting. Zaru is when you dip it into the soup and bukake is when the soup's already in the noodles, but they're both cold. Yeah, but I honestly don't think you can go wrong with anything on the menu here. They also have a curry udon, which I love as well. One thing I really like about this particular udon chain, because there are a few in Tokyo, you can see them make the udon, and it happens in a number of minutes. Like, of course, they're not making it from scratch in front of me, but I can see them just put it in the hot water, they boil it, pull it out, and it's ready. Crazy. This is honestly one of the fast foods of Japan, and a healthier one at that. For an afternoon snack, I've come to Hoshino Kohi, which is a popular coffee chain here in Japan, and it's located literally everywhere. And it's my first time visiting the Shibuya one because I have a view of the crossing literally right in front of me. I love to come here and order something sweet, so I'm thinking to get their famous pancakes because they're really fluffy, as well as a hot cafe latte. 
just be aware if you do come here, it takes about 20 minutes for them to make the pancakes. Look at it! This pancake looks incredible. I love the pancakes here. They're so fluffy and soft and delicious. And I got a whole like, tub of maple syrup. And then I also have my cafe latte. Time to take a sip. And I want to let you guys know that whenever I come here, they do it super hot. So if you like piping hot things, this is the place for you. That's so good. I need some caffeine right now. I'm a little tired. Yeah, they do do decaffeinated as well. So it's good if you want to come at nighttime because cafes are actually a popular thing here in Japan at night called like Yoru Cafe. I think the first time I came here was like at 6 or 7 p.m. But enough of that. I know you all want to see this beautiful pancake. You can get a deal, which is what I got, where you get the double pancakes with a drink for about 1,280 yen. So that's not bad. I think that's pretty reasonable. I need to put my maple syrup on. First bite. Mm. I love the flavor of the pancakes here. Yeah. I find that the actual pancakes themselves aren't overwhelmingly sweet, but they add a bit of like sweetness with, of course, the maple syrup. Look at all the fluffiness as well. My tip for these is that I like to remove because there's two layers and then add some of the like butter to the bottom one. Otherwise, you won't have butter in that bottom one. Mm. I'm so happy. I love these so much. This chain also sells like sandwiches as well as like a few main dishes and like some melon soda drinks. So it's not just about sweets. But oh god, there's one more sweet that I love so much here. It's a like pudding. I'm kind of on the fence. Should I order it? I don't know. Japanese pudding is like on another level. My pudding is here! Time to put the caramel sauce on top. Woo! Oh my thing fell down! Oh my god! Itadakimasu. I feel like I don't deserve this, but... I'm gonna enjoy it anyway. Mmm. Mmm. The richness of the caramel sauce is just amazing. We've got a little bit of cream on the side. That pudding and caramel, such a good combination. Japanese puddings are the best. When they served it to me, they said this is the Showa pudding. Showa was an era here in Japan many, many years ago. And it's actually one of the more popular ones. I feel like there's a lot of Showa themed cafes and restaurants and even izakaya. It's a very old style pudding that I still enjoy and many other do today. I've come to eat some sushi because I can't do a video about Japanese food and chains without doing a sushi train. So this is Kurazushi in Harajuku and it's super colorful. It's my first time here and there's a massive line. So I'll see you at the booth. Since this one is in the middle of Harajuku, almost everybody wanted sushi. So it was a bit of a long wait, 30 to 40 minutes. So I got a ticket off the machine and then I was taken to my booth. It was worth the wait. When you come to sushi train restaurants, you often get to order off of like an iPad or a screen. And the same is at Kurazushi. They have English language options too. And you can just kind of browse through what they have. There's so many varieties. You've even got some dessert. We've got alcohol. Of course, you can also take sushi off of the train when it comes around too. But I prefer to order from the screen just because I feel like it might be fresher. I don't know, but that's kind of what I believe. This is my first time at Kurazushi. I always go to sushi roll, so I'm interested in seeing what's different. I just want to mention there's some really weird items at this particular like Harajuku store. There's like sushi crepes. Uh, I'm not that adventurous, but that's an option for you if you want to have something colorful. But then there's like tiramisu, mango, cream puffs, like the, the dessert looks really good. At the table you'll find some hidden utensils and chopsticks, as well as sauces and ginger. Perfect for your sushi. When you come here you can get free tea, so definitely get that. You serve it yourself, like they have a matcha, green tea powder, and then you grab the cup from the top, and then there's hot water at the table as well. And this is free refills. So everything I've ordered has arrived. I have a fatty roast beef sushi, as well as my favorite, the cucumber sushi. It's basic, but it's simple. And then I also got this really unique drink. It's called like rice cola. I don't know what it is. The stuff, I asked them and none of them knew what it was. So we'll find out. And if you're like me and you're not the biggest seafood eater, you can still come to sushi in Japan and enjoy it. So don't worry. I know a lot of people will make fun of you. I've been through a lot, guys. People are always like, oh, you live in Japan? You don't eat seafood? Yeah, well, cucumber all the way. <gasps> the best thing about eating the cucumber options is it's always the cheapest. I think this plate was 150 yen or 130 yen. 
Just like a dollar. I've noticed though that they have a gluten-free soy sauce here. So it's super like tourist friendly. There's a lot of people who come here and they're like struggling to eat and find gluten-free options, but it's here in English as well. And the menu had a lot of soy dessert options as well as a lot more variety than other sushi trains. So I'm actually thinking Kurazushi is a great place if you're a tourist in Japan. I'm really curious about this, so let me open it. Oh, it really smells like Coke. Oh my gosh, that's fizzy. I wasn't thinking it was going to be fizzy, but it's very carbonated. It definitely does have rice bits in it. I just, I just got it. It's um, sushi chain, which is why it's rice coke, because they use rice and sushi. <laughs> Maybe I was a bit dumb to not realize that sooner, but this is actually kind of good. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be against drinking this. I like this. It was only 200 yen. My next piece of sushi. There's a lot of meat on this. I've never seen like a piece of meat blanketed. Oh, there's two pieces of sushi underneath. Oh my gosh. Let's pretend that didn't happen. I'm gonna compare. I just had the gluten-free soy sauce, but I wanna see if the standard one is different. To be honest, it tasted sort of um, sweet. So I don't know. I don't really wanna do this in one bite. That's so much. So I'm gonna break it up. That is good. Mmm. That is so light and easy to eat. That was really good. I've had um, karubi sushi at sushi roll before and it's just like really fatty and oily but this one was quite like it feels like a bit of higher quality meat i'm gonna add a bit of spice to it so when the sushi train comes around you can see there's like things that you can grab not only sushi but like wasabi and chichimi and salt put my bit of wasabi on top i personally feel you can come to sushi train at any time of the day like as a quick snack or like for dinner but this one in harajuku was so busy I don't feel like you can just pop in and pop out, so be aware of that. The sushi is very popular and it's very cheap and affordable. And this one is so colorful. Like, the colors here is insane. It's very cool. I think it's pretty new as well. One of my favorite things is seeing everything go by as well. Not that I pick anything off of it, but it's like I can see who's taken what off because there's like a little label. And they're little capsules. Oh, that reminds me, there's a capsule game we can play here. So the more like plates you eat, I think it's like five, and then you get one go at the capsule machine. I'm so excited. I feel like a kid. <laughs> this would be such a fun place for a family to come. I tried to eat at least five plates so I could play the capsule game, and I lost. So, you know, I tried my best, but I'll just have to come back and win one of those capsules next time. All right, on to the next food location. Right behind me is Yayoi Ken, one of my favorite tea sugar restaurants here in Japan. And I can't wait to show you because it's super budget friendly, super healthy, and lots of variety. So let's go. Before you sit down, make sure to order off a digital screen at the front of the store. They do have English language options, and there's honestly so much on the menu here. I love it. And you can also choose the type of rice you want and pay digitally. Once you grab your ticket, head to your table. I just ordered five minutes ago and my dish is already here. It was super speedy. I've got the soy meat ginger shobayaki. And this is the first time I've heard that they're doing soy meat. It was always meat before. So this place is really good if you want to experience teishoku, so a variety of Japanese dishes in kind of a family home cooked style. And a lot of it's healthy. So right here I've got the healthier style of rice, which is like six grains, I believe. Miso soup. And we have some tofu as well as some pickles on the side. I really love these pickles and these are all you can eat. You can also get okawari for your rice. So if you're a big um, carb eater, you can go get as many as you want. So that's a really great benefit of eating it. You'll definitely fill yourself up. So, ikodakimasu. They also give you a salad with the shobayaki and it's got a sesame dressing. I haven't had soy meat here before, so I'm curious how it will taste. Mmm, that is so juicy. Wow, that's so, so good. I don't think I could tell that that isn't real meat. Mmm, that is great. I'm not a big fan of pork, which is usually used on this dish, so it's great that I can now enjoy it with the soy meat option. Let me give the miso soup a bit of a try. It's still steaming hot. That's, that's a good miso soup. It's so homey. I feel like I could be at one of my Japanese homestay like families and they're cooking me a dish. That's what I really love about it. So it's, I think it's very much comfort food for Japanese people and something you can definitely try and get an authentic taste of Japan. 
to do the tofu, you have to add the soy sauce like this. Simple but so, so good. It really melts in your mouth. It's like a silken tofu, really soft. And then this like savoriness of the soy sauce. Just such a good combination. And I didn't discover this until later in my years in Japan. So definitely give like tofu and soy sauce a go. It's simple, but it, it works. Here's the skimmel, so the pickles, and I'm gonna give it a go. Mm. Same flavor from six years ago. So freaking good. They don't need to change this recipe. Just as good as a simple tofu. Simple is always best. I don't have the fanciest palette, guys. Not only do they have free unlimited rice, you can get free unlimited tea as well, hot green tea. And I'm about to get myself one. Must have it when I come here. My favorite part about living in Japan. <laughs> free unlimited tea. If you do plan on coming here alone, there are a lot of individual booths. So it's once again, another place where Japan focuses on solo eating. Um, yeah, so don't worry if you're by yourself. Perfect for solo travelers. For the entire dish, I've only paid 710 yen, which is crazy affordable if you ask me. Also, this place is everywhere in Japan, so if you're traveling, if you see one, just hop in. They're open in the mornings, they have completely different menus for the mornings. It's like natto or fish. One of my other recommendations when coming here is to get the karage teishoku. That one's really good, and when I was a university student in Kyoto, I lived off that. There was one right near our campus, like literally a one-minute walk, and I got that all the time. My first time at Yoshinoya and I'm surprised because actually a paper menu here. It does have a lot of options and I have a confession to make. It actually has been six years since I've had gudon. I don't know why, I just haven't had it. So I think I'm going to go for a classic that I used to get all the time six years ago, which is the gudon with cheese. Let's order that. Cheese no gudon de. If you get the teishoku, which is the set menu, you can also get unlimited refills of rice. And it's funny, they had like a morning menu, and I guess it's because people come here before work. That's interesting. I don't know if I could have gudon early in the morning. That is not my kind of breakfast. Oh, it's here. That was really fast. I think it was within less than three minutes that my gudon appeared magically in front of me. Um, so that's why it is basically Japan's fast food and it is known as a late night snack so these places are often open 24 hours and you'll find lots of people packed in here even at 10 p.m and midnight because it is basically almost 10 p.m here as well and i have my cheese gudon i can smell the cheese so much so gonna take my first bite and i also got the small size of rice because I'm not feeling too hungry and it's late at night whoa look at that you can see the steam coming right off dagimasu Mmm, that is really juicy. They simmer the meat here in things like mirin and shoyu, so it's really flavorful. And we also have the rice at the bottom, which is got some of that sauce. Mmm. I think the reason I didn't come is because it's quite unhealthy. I was trying to have a good diet. Something I wouldn't be able to get all the time. Look at that. This is incredibly cheap though. I only paid like 500 yen, so what? $3.50 USD for this? This is insanely cheap. I can't complain. Like honestly, there's nothing much I can complain about. You've got bits of onion as well here. If you pay a bit extra, you can get a salad and miso soup on the side. But I think I would actually prefer to have some veggies in the bowl. I think there are a few options. Like you could have kimchi and maybe okura. So maybe I'll do that next time because there are a few other gudon chains here in Tokyo as well as in Japan, like skia and matsuya, which I have to try because I don't know what the difference is. I know they're all incredibly cheap. Maybe Matsuya is the cheapest, but honestly, I'm pretty impressed by Yoshinoya. We have some spicy shichimi that we can add on top, so I'm gonna do that. I'm a big, 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 big fan of shichimi. I recommend adding that. It gives it a bit of a hit. So just check the menu, and there's something called Tokumori, which is a massive, massive bowl, and I don't even wanna know how big that is. Like, that's like a food challenge in itself, because this mini bowl, I'm already feeling like energized and almost full, <laughs> and I'm only halfway through, so. <gasps> Depending on the size you get, you can add extra. So for that massive bowl, it's an extra 430 yen, which is essentially the price of my own bowl on its own. <laughs> so I don't want to imagine how big it is. 
If you're not a fan of gyudon, they do have unagi, which is Japanese eel, as well as curry. So there's a few options on the menu, but they really do specialize in gyudon because that's what they're known for. That wraps up a few Japanese chain restaurants that you can find here in Japan, and I hope you have the opportunity to visit them. If you like this series, let me know and I'll continue it because there are literally so many chains here in Japan that I can visit. It's literally endless, but I had a lot of fun and it's time for bed for me. So I'm going to see you guys. No more midnight eats because I'm going to have to go on a diet now. All right. Bye.